More than five years ago, the Kansas City, Kansas School District began giving free laptop computers to all of its high school students. Three years ago, North Kansas City joined the gadget giveaway by providing free netbooks to its high schoolers. And starting this school year, 11-inch MacBook Airs. Everybody loves technology, right? But what have these school districts got to show for their massive investment? Are test scores up? Are they rivaling the Chinese in math, the British in English? Okay, I just had to say that, Randy. Yeah. Well, we sent reporter Danny Wood on assignment to find out. Another school day in Kansas City. Here at Oak Park High School in the North Kansas City School District, the wide corridors with the laughter of teenagers as they chat and fool around are still the same as ever. Hi world, hi mom, hi dad. <laughs> but in the classrooms off these hallways, in just a few short years, the way students are learning has radically changed. Welcome to the brave new world of the IT classroom. At Oak Park and at other high schools in the North Kansas City School District, every single student has been given their own personal computer for use at school and at home. All the students' parents have to do is pay about $20 insurance. This IT program began rolling out in local school districts in 2007 and has significantly changed classroom dynamics and the learning process. In many classes, like this one, laptops and online course materials have replaced paper, pens and textbooks. For much of the lesson time, the object of the student's gaze and the source of their knowledge is their laptop. Grandpa would be lost. The teacher is still here, but no longer the focus of attention or a font of knowledge like they used to be. Often they're an intermediary between the student and their computer. The technology is like anything else. It's all in how you use it. Um, it's never going to replace a caring and experienced educator because we all need that human one-on-one -on -one interaction, but it can be an incredibly powerful tool. When we're doing an activity, I present the material, usually very briefly, and then I say, let's practice and they actually have an activity where they have to apply, they have to do the actual activity and practice, and I'm walking around making sure that they're doing the activity, they're not drifting off in La La Land and listening to music and playing a video game. But with the computer, because they're working at their own pace and individually, I can come around and answer each individual question about their sticking point and help them master that concept. Right. This isn't a computer factory, it's the gymnasium at Oak Park High School, where the school district's IT policy is taking another step into the future. These staff members are unpacking hundreds of new personal computers for the students. But not just any computers. These are Apple MacBook Airs worth about $1,000 each. The North Kansas City School District has leased 6,000 of them for all the students at its four high schools. It's costing $1.5 million annually for the next four years. Flashy Apple Macs are replacing old PC laptops that were leased for under half the cost. Emma Keitlinger, a senior, is on the Superintendent's Advisory Council for the North Kansas City School District. She was part of a test group for this new technology. I asked Emma why the PC laptops needed replacing. They were older and they crashed a lot and they were very, very slow because everyone was in the school was on them at once. You could barely even get logged in and get to the main screen. And so we needed something faster, easier to use and more updated. So we weren't sitting in class staring at the screen, waiting to do our homework that we couldn't do because we wouldn't start. Eric Sipes is executive director of IT services for the North Kansas City School District. I ask Eric if in these tough economic times, even if the computers did need an upgrade, is he ever concerned that too much money is going into computer technology and not enough into other infrastructure or even just hiring good teachers? Well, the, um, the thoughts are is we're preparing our kids for life after high school. So uh, no, I wouldn't say that I'm concerned parents I spoke to are very supportive of the computer push. Parents like Peggy Munkin, a member of the Booster Club who volunteers at the school cafeteria. But what about this sort of idea that there's just too much technology in the classes now and the kids are actually, you know, they're on their computers, the teacher's teaching the class, but there's not that 
Is there a lack of interaction now that's giving them real yeah. learning experience? Basically, the computers, from what I've, what I've experienced, is a lot of times it may replace the book that you carry, and instead it'll be on the computer. But they're still interacting. I know my son still had to write essay papers. They're still having to talk about them in class. They're, um, he has military history, and they get into some really deep discussions um, on different subjects. So I don't think that it has replaced them interacting with anybody. Time to visit another school. This beautiful 1930s building is Wyandotte High School in the Kansas City, Kansas School District. In 2007, this district was the first in Kansas City to distribute personal computers to each high school student, and they were all Apple MacBooks. Elizabeth Alt, in her second year as a teacher, has always taught with computers. She strongly supports providing each student with a laptop arguing that schools need to reflect the real world. I try to think of jobs where you don't use a computer, and I can't think of any. I mean, you go to McDonald's, it's not a very complex computer, but you still have to know how to use a computer and know how to problem solve. And so I think that you have to use them, you have to be able to use them, you have to be comfortable using them and comfortable being able to fix your problems on them as well. This is the Central Office and Training Center for Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools, and I'm here to find out how this district measures the success of its IT and computer policies. In this particular case, the distribution of thousands of Apple Macintosh personal computers to its students. Julie, you're the technology integration coach. Correct. Uh, for Kansas City Public Schools. Correct. Apple Macintosh is often about 50% more expensive in these sort of tough economic times, it's a pretty hard sell, isn't it, providing thousands of kids with the most expensive form of computer rather than something that many would say does the task. Right. Well, you're, you're right. It is. They are a lot more expensive. Uh, the one thing we look at is we uh, look really closely at cost over time. Um, so what will it cost to maintain and either re maintain a machine over the life of four years, let's say, because normally we're on a four-year cycle. Um, and in most cases, you will find out that um, the cost and the ownership of a Mac computer is much less than uh, having to upkeep a Windows-based machine. We also looked at, uh, as funny as it sounds, the virus issue. Um, we don't have viruses. We don't deal with viruses at all. Um, I can be honest with you, we have 5,000 laptops out there in our high school kids' hands, and we've never dealt with a virus ever. Mm -hmm. that, that also does sound very convincing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very good, aren't I? <laughs> you are. No, you are. You are. But, I mean, you are an Apple Distinguished Educator. Yeah. So I'm partial. How do you measure the success of providing each student with a personal laptop computer? In terms of whether it's making the kids uh, better at learning things or mm -hmm. perhaps in a, putting them in a better position to get jobs later. Mm -hmm. Is there some sort of measurement of that? You know, we had looked at doing some kind of, you know, numerical measurement at some point in time, but what's really hard is to put a number with it. And so some of the things we look at is we look at things like attendance rates, and our attendance rates are up. Um, we look at, um, you know, graduation rates, and those are still about the same. So it's been, you know, so we've got kind of mixed results there. And can that um, be tied to the computer? It, we can't see, and, there's, and that's what's funny, because you can't really tie directly um, one of the reasons is, is the same year we rolled laptops out was the same year we shifted curriculum. And so it was like this, and we added a couple of other things. So it's like exactly what it is. But I will say this, some of the things that we have seen, um, students who are taking online classes or college courses, much higher than it was several years ago. Is it increasing test scores? Well, we think so. We hope so. Kids are reading more. Um, whether it's, uh, it, I had a teacher tell me, she's like, Julie, they're reading all the time because they're checking their Facebook or they're reading a blog or something like that. And I'd never thought about it because I just, when kids get online, they're online, but I don't think about that as reading. I suppose some people, as you kind of suggested, might think that, I mean, Facebook is hardly reading. Oh yeah. But some blogs, have, obviously it would be yes. reading. Do you have any doubts about this technology invasion of the classroom? Putting computers in the classroom isn't gonna teach kids. Um, we still have to teach kids how to learn. And so um, putting tools in the kids' hands, um, you have to have a trained instructor. And so we have teachers that are getting really good at that. And they're figuring out that this isn't gonna replace 
my worksheet. I'm not gonna make an online worksheet and the kids are gonna do this. We're gonna use this to really impact the world. My favorite thing to do in a classroom is if I can walk into a classroom and I have no idea where the teacher is because that means they're at the same level as the kids um, and they're learning right along with them or they're helping them. They're helping them work through problems. They're helping them figure out situations. Um, that's huge. And joining us now is reporter Danny Wood. You went undercover for that report, Danny, because you've lost the beard now. That's right. I decided I'd come out of my winter wardrobe for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell us about, um, uh, do we have any definitive answers then as to whether having the laptop computers be giving away free has boosted the academic scores in either Kansas City, Kansas or North Kansas City school districts? No, there's no ap actual definitive After all evidence. of this? After all this. But there's a lot of anecdotal evidence to suggest that um, these laptops in the in the classrooms have uh, boosted the students' performance. Um, in the Kansas City, Kansas School District, they told me that attendance rates are up, um, graduation rates are about the same, um, but there had been a change in curriculum about the same time they brought in the laptops, so they weren't definitively sure laptops were responsible. But teachers across the board all say that they've improved the results and improved attendance. What about theft? Theft uh, is only a very minor issue and I think part of that reason is probably because the students can take these home, they're the textbook, they're the exercise book for the student, they feel very proud of this technology and so I, I think for them it's something that they want to keep their hands on. Danny Wood, thanks. Thank you.